The College World Series is establishing itself as a mainstream sporting event. The Jaguars signed a massive stadium deal. The Raiders coach is in financial hot water. The NCAA is unbanning cannabis. And we will explore what it's like to host a major sports award ceremony with comedian Matt Friend, who is hosting the NHL's Big Night. It's Thursday, June 27th. I'm Owen Poindexter, and this is Front Office Sports Today. The College World Series is establishing itself as a major event on the sports calendar. Joining me now to discuss is Front Office Sports Newsletter co-author David Rumsey. Welcome, David. Hey, Owen. Thanks for having me. Great to have you back on. So uh, we just wrapped up the College World Series. Congratulations, Tennessee. What were your big takeaways from the most recent tournament? Yeah, I think the big thing for me going into it was there was this consecutive years of record growth as far as attendance, uh, viewership, as ESPN continues to pump it up. So ahead of the College World Series, I know you had uh, the executive director of the College World Series on this show, and you know they were excited about it. And I, I think it delivered overall, but they almost did so good last year, they couldn't quite get up to their standards this year, barely missed out on another attendance record, barely missed out on more record viewership, but still very, very high marks. So Arrow is still pointing up in my mind. Yeah, right. It feels like, you know, it feels like some things do go up every year, but not everything's going to go up every year, but it is close enough, right? It was pretty much a, you know, just a tiny shade below, you know, the viewership and the attendance from last year. What do you attribute to the, you know, this overall growth story here? Yeah, well, first of all, I think it's Omaha and the experience that they're doing there. It's like a bucket list item. I think a lot of people would agree with that getting out there. And it sounds like they have a lot of season ticket holders even that go from all over the country each year, which is pretty incredible to think people from yeah. every state are traveling to Omaha, Nebraska each summer, yes. whether <laughs> their t- team is playing or not. But beyond that, which, I, which I, I haven't been, I think that'd be really cool to go just to check it out. It, it seems like they're getting really fortunate with the fan bases that are getting there. Um, you know, this year it was four ACC schools and four SEC schools. Uh, I live in South Carolina now. I'm from North Carolina. That's ACC, SEC country. I can tell you, man, like ACC and SEC fans love their college baseball. Obviously, nothing's going to compare to football. And when March Madness is around, college basketball is, you know, it's it's king own king in a way. But these fans with, with good baseball schools, they really like their baseball. And I think that's surprising to a lot of people who maybe their alma mater is not that great at baseball or they're just not a huge baseball fan. Um, it, it's really interesting. I think that's a big reason why the College World Series is growing and not just the final event in Omaha, but the Super Regionals and all the um, rounds leading up to it as well. Yeah, I was having similar thoughts, just kind of looking at the map of, you know, like the the schools that are participating, especially in the final rounds here. It's college football territory. Yep. And this is, you know, even though there's a lot going on in the sports calendar at this point, um, college football and NFL football are this is their their vacation, essentially. Uh, so, yeah, it's it's actually a pretty fortunate spot or maybe an intentional spot uh, for college baseball to have its moment. And, um, and, and yeah, it's kind of a, you know, a unique spot of like the, the South and middle of the country, you know, don't have the same interests as the coasts. And obviously the coasts are, are getting interested too, but yeah, I also just feel like ESPN has got a big part to play here as an entity that is, you know, is, is taking ownership of this and is pumping it up and saying, you know, this is a big event, get excited about these players, get excited about these teams, you know, get excited about the drama. Yeah, I would agree with that. And, you know, ESPN certainly, you know, might have its own issues and it might be, you know, trying to sell some equity and all that. But for, sure. for like, all that aside, when ESPN gets involved in a sport, I think it really elevates it, whether it's College World Series, whether it's uh, Women's March Madness, whether it's. Yeah, the NHL, uh, I feel like, has gotten a nice little boost from their presence. Yeah, the, uh, I'm a golf fan. The Masters or PGA Championship, I feel like it's a huge boost from having real live coverage on ESPN. And, and to that end, you know, they put a College World Series game two on ABC this year. I believe they're going to have another uh, series final game on ABC 
next year and maybe even so for the women's college world series so i think stuff like that helps because they do have that outlet at abc to pump, pump it up even more and put it on network tv and obviously a lot of people just watch espn no matter what's on so that that can't hurt either yeah absolutely um and before we let you go i think we ought to hit on uh, jim schlossnagel the coach um who you know was the coach of texas a m who just lost to tennessee in the finals um, you know, made a very adamant statement about he's never leaving Texas A&M. And I think the very next day is, is off to Texas. Yeah. So, I don't know, uh, any, any thoughts on Jim here? Well, um, yeah, I'll be interested to see what his final contract number is, uh, with yeah. Texas. I would imagine that has a big thing to do with it, but, um, you know, a good note is I believe he was making 1.3 million with Texas A&M. And that was about, I believe his buyout with Texas A&M, but, they had a clause if he were to go to an in-state school like Texas, that doubles. So the Longhorns are really paying up to steal him away. And uh, I guess we'll see if they can move into the SEC, to stealing a coach, and see if they can get to the College World Series next year. Yeah, I guess I guess they picked their guy. <laughs> he must have been the most expensive one out there, given the buyout. Uh, David Rumsey, thanks so much for joining us on the show. Of course, thanks. It's good business being a major sports team that can make somewhat credible threats about relocating. The city of Jacksonville has agreed to contribute $775 million toward maintenance, repairs, and renovations of the Jacksonville Jaguars TIAA Bank Stadium. The Jaguars, owned by Shad Khan, whose net worth is around $12 billion, will cover $625 million of the $1.4 billion project, 80% of game day expenses, and any cost overruns. As part of the deal, the Jaguars are signing a 30-year lease, which comes with a non-relocation agreement, as well as a clause that limits them to one overseas game per year, with a carve-out for the NFL to require them to play a second international game once every four years. The Jaguars have played in London every year since 2013. The construction is set to begin after the 2025 season, and will also force the team to play in another venue during the 2027 season. The wife of Las Vegas Raiders coach Antonio Pierce has filed for bankruptcy in Arizona. The filings indicate that the coach is on the hook for more than $28 million because he was one of the guarantors on a series of loans to car dealerships, which have since defaulted. The lenders, namely the Nissan Motor Acceptance Corp Corporation and Hyundai Capital America, are now seeking payments from Pierce for $23 million and $4.5 million, respectively, and attempted to garnish Pierce's salary with the Raiders. The bankruptcy filing by Jocelyn Pierce was made to protect the family's assets. In 2020, Antonio Pierce was named as part of a class action lawsuit that claimed that he, along with other players and dealerships, helped boost a program called Set for Life that would provide ongoing services to customers despite allegedly knowing that the businesses would fail. The case is still listed as open. And the NCAA will no longer test athletes for cannabis use. In the past, the collegiate governing body has given out suspensions of up to a year for a positive test, but now it is backing off that stance with the rationale that it tests for performance-enhancing drugs, and marijuana does not enhance performance. The sports world has followed the shifting stance of the country on this one. 24 states in Washington, D.C. have legalized cannabis, and the federal government has begun the long process of moving it from a Schedule One drug, which is the most severe designation, to a Schedule Three drug, which is for substances with a low to moderate potential for addiction. The NBA stopped testing for pot in 2023, and the NFL is studying its effect on paid management. We have come a long way from the times not so long ago when cannabis use by athletes like Ricky Williams and Michael Phelps made national news. Joined now by comedian, impressionist, and host of the NHL Award Show, Matt Friend. Welcome, Matt. Hello. Great to be with you. Thanks for having me. Uh, great to have you on. So you've done all kinds of gigs. You've done TV. You're at the Golden Globes. Um, do you feel like you've done similar things to the NHL award ceremony or is this kind of new territory for you? Uh, this is the biggest thing I've done. I mean, in terms of a role I have in a production, I performed at the correspondence dinner like seven weeks ago. Uh, I'm doing an hour of stand up, touring that, uh, done, you know, comedy interviews on these red carpets. Uh, but I I've hosted events before, but televised like this, uh, definitely the biggest thing I've done. I'm so excited. I'm ready. Uh, thank God I do stand up and perform all the time or else I'd be very nervous, but I feel yeah. great about it. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun tomorrow. Yeah. And uh, take me through the, the prep process. So, you know, you found yeah. out you get the gig. Where do you even start in terms of, you know, figuring out like your responsibilities and, and how you're going to handle them? 
Well, the NHL has been amazing. Uh, Michael Dempsey has been fantastic, the producer of the show, and they brought me on, welcomed me. It was very smooth. Uh, I basically brought on some couple great writers as well. Uh, and I'm a big Blackhawks fan. I grew up in Chicago during the Blackhawks. Taves, Kane, Sharp, Crawford, good years. Team Dynasty, the great years, I would say, three yeah. and five years. Uh, so I, you know, I'm familiar with the sport and have been following the playoffs and, and the cup final. Um, so, uh, you know, and I also look at the timing of the event too. I mean, it was a pretty quick turnaround because yeah. I found out yeah. like five weeks ago or four weeks ago, but it's also the night of the debate, uh, this oh, thing. Yeah. So there's a lot of stuff that fans can expect. There'll be some light political humor. There'll be celebrity pop culture content and of course hockey sports content i'll definitely do some impressions which i'm excited to showcase some new hockey impressions as well you can see a gary bettman uh maybe a nikita kucherov so it's gonna be it's gonna be a lot of fun and i'm excited for fans to see kind of more of me beyond just the voice voices and kind of this hosting comedy uh show topical monologue up front so gonna be yeah. a lot of fun yeah, actually, I have questions on a few of those things. But in terms of, like, the content that you feel like, you know, I mean, this is, like, a very general audience. It's, you know, sort of a cross-section of North America, really, uh, who will be tuning in for this. Uh, yeah. Maybe other countries, too. Um, Canada. Yeah, right. Um, yeah, probably a big Canadian audience. How, how um, I mean, you said you're you're going to get a little bit into politics and that, um, you know, the, you're going to just kind of hit a bunch of topics. Um do you feel like there's there's like a line that you want to get kind of close to in terms of like how edgy you're going to be to like keep things fun and exciting, but also, you know, not, you know, be in the headlines for the wrong reasons the next day? I'm not concerned about being in the headlines for the wrong reasons, because I think, you know, I just I just do my thing. You know, I think I have a good sense of what I like. So ultimately, I'm focused on uh, what I want to create, what I would want to see in an award show. I have a lot of great inspirations for, I'm just a huge fan of award shows and live formats like this. Billy Crystal, Carson, more recently like Seth Meyers, Kimmel, uh, even John Mulaney. Like there's just so many great hosts and I have a, it's not dissimilar to like hockey players who look at uh, certain players growing up and kind of try to take, certain habits that they do and i kind of i've studied these monologues and all these different things uh over the years but i think in terms of like finding the line comedically that's kind of a a broader conversation that people uh continually discuss in the comedy space like i'm just turned 26 two days ago i'm a gen z comedian uh so like ever all comedians like to target my generation they say we can't talk about anything but i don't really agree with that i mean i think there's a lot to talk about. Just change the way you're uh, you're doing it. Um, there's a lot of material out there. And if there wasn't, then I wouldn't be at this point right now. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I feel like people who say Gen Z people don't talk about stuff like, I don't, I don't know who they're listening to. I, I think they're just kind of on a, a literal different wavelength. Um, yeah, yeah, I agree. And um, I, I'm just... Yeah, I, I, in terms of like the audience that you're you're playing to, I mean, are you thinking about this audience, like both the people in the room, uh, Absolutely. also the people watching on TV? How are you kind of thinking about how are you going to play to that specific group? Absolutely. If you're not in my role, the comedian, the host, if you're not thinking about the audience, that is the number one thing you would be doing wrong. You need mm -hmm. to think about who's in the room. You have to read the room. You know, it's not enough just to have great jokes. There's timing, but you have to read the room. And that's kind of the mistake, I think, that certain people have been making in the past. You have to realize the environment that you're in. Like, this is a hockey award show. This isn't the Grammys. It's not the Correspondence Dinner. Uh, it's not the Globes. Um, but I think, like, there's certain things that I can do. Um, I think that's hopefully part of my appeal, I guess. You know, like, Chameleon, I can kind of talk to really anybody in po politics and pop culture, actors, athletes. Um, but I think like ultimately it's a celebration of the players and the teams there and, and this great sport. So I want to bring a lot of levity and entertainment, but the focus will be uh, hockey. That's what we're there to celebrate. And you mentioned you're going to be doing some impressions. That's probably what you're best known for. 
I feel For like sure. in terms of, you know, the the set of athletes and, and other folks who you, you've got to work with here, you're yeah. kind of being dealt a, hard, a difficult hand. Just, yeah. um, you know, hockey players yeah. are kind of famously, you know, <laughs> uh, you know, they don't put a lot of themselves out there. They're, no. they're very team focused. So, yeah, who's uh, who do you think is a good target here? Uh, in the room? I mean, yeah. There's, uh, or there's whoever you're so going to hit up, you know. Or... Well, you know, it's funny. I mean, if I survive the correspondence dinner room, I think I can survive mm -hmm. anything. So I mm -hmm. feel I feel good about it. Uh, I look at like Tommy Lee Jones reacting during the Oscars. He never laughs. So I'm prepared for the stoic faces of these young athletes. But um, I mean, I think in, in, in the room, I'll obviously I'll have to go for Gary Bettman. Sure. Uh, he's obviously a figure that people like to address, I guess, comedically. Um there's, uh, I mean, obviously, as a Blackhawks fan, I'll do some Bedard content. Uh -huh. uh, there's going to be, I'll leave some element of surprise. Sure, you know, sure. I have to tune in. Yeah. <laughs> so. yeah. yeah. And you mentioned working with the NHL. Uh, I'm wondering, it's like, how, uh, you know, how stage managed everything is. Like, do you, do you pick your own outfit or like, you, what, yeah, how, how, how detailed does it get? Uh, no, I mean, it's detailed in terms of, uh, it was a great team, great crew, great people all around, top to bottom. Uh, in terms of like what I'm wearing, I'm I'm gonna be wearing outfits with Zenya. Uh, I just got back from Fashion Week with them right. in Milan, so they are styling me. Wow, uh, great great people over there, and the the NHL. I think they're happy because I'm gonna look great. So. Yeah, so it's not just the the suit you had in your closet. Um, no. uh, and your in terms of your jokes, your scripts, um, does that all get? pre-approved ahead of time does someone For take sure. a look at that yeah <laughs> i mean absolutely it'd be shocking if they if they let the comedian run wild but uh they've been great uh so far you know in terms of letting uh you know me the creativity kind of shine um of course you know like you can't run totally wild but i think they're doing a they're they're being helpful and uh they've been great to work with mm-hmm and um, what are you most looking forward to in terms of this whole experience? I'm most looking forward to just the spectacle of it all. I mean, it's Las Vegas. It's the Fountain Blue. It's the it's this is the the biggest uh, you know the biggest league for this sport, and uh, like some of the most talented people in the world in one uh, space. And for me to be able to kind of guide that evening is very special and it's been a dream to host a big award show like this um televised it's a huge moment so there's just so many things that i'm really excited from the red carpet to the end of the show it's gonna be and it's a quick show i mean it's like 48 50 minutes it's not like okay. the oscars it's like three hours so yeah and I, and I like that too i think less is more um i think it's gonna be especially in the world we live in now where so much of this is consumed uh by clips anyways when you're in the bathroom so yeah. I mean, like, so yeah 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 i mean i think by like hour three of the oscars everyone's kind of just waiting for it to end um, another slap yeah 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 exactly um and uh it, i mean we you know the the playoffs just ended or do you feel like you've got some material based on you know the panthers winning mcdavid not quite getting there um are you playing off that kind of thing Tune in to find out. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, yeah. Um, all right. Um, but before we let you go, I'm wondering if we can hear from from Bettman or Keith, or not Keith Kachuk, but sorry, uh, Matt Kachuk, or uh, anyone who, uh, who was, you know, um, he, he got on tap for us. Uh, well, I was doing, uh, with, with McDavid, it was just very stoic. He's like, you know, so, um, you know, I was asked to uh, participate in the NHL show. And just like game seven, the answer is not going to fucking happen this year. So, uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> like, that was a little mumbly yeah. version of it, but you, I'm excited for everybody to, to see these ones. Yeah, yeah. He is always kind of like staring into the middle distance of like, yes, <laughs> he's I know. Like some, like, and the Batman, high... he's got that, that Gary Batman, he's kind of got that New York kind of a Jew yeah. thing going for him. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I like it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he he feels like the easiest target. I feel like he does. And like you, you know, you're you're not punching down with Batman. No, uh, he's been there no. forever. Um and um, yeah. All right, well, Matt, looking forward to seeing seeing it. Good luck with everything, and thanks, thanks. for joining us on the show. Thank you. Thanks for having me. 
That's it for today. Do us a favor and rate this podcast or hit the like button if you're on YouTube. Thanks for listening. We will see you tomorrow.